we meet again at last. The circle is now complete. What's the world coming to? Well, you got a problem with what I did, Anthony? Oh, no, hey, no. Fucking rat anyway, so family's all rat, 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 rat. Who'd have up to be a rat? Stupid bastard. Stupid fucking bugger. Yeah, I'm real sorry your mom blew up, Ricky. Now you're gonna dig the fucking thing. You're gonna dig the hole. You're gonna do it. I got no fucking line. You're gonna fuck. Yes, I think the fat hole. I don't give a fuck. fuck. I realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was pure and simple. Jesus Christ. Mister, you okay in there? Ah, put some vintage coffee around here someplace. Have you any idea what the cost of your actions is? What their effect might be? Are you to give them hope? What do you give them? We give them happiness, and they give us authority. What's going on, friends? It's Logan Myers here for the Cinefellas Podcast. It's episode 28. I talked to you guys not too long ago. I had my interview with Diane Franklin uh, from the Amityville Murders. She was in a bunch of great flicks from the 80s. But this time around, I'm going to be talking to Mark Steven Johnson. Yes, the great director. Did Daredevil. He did Grumpy Old Men. Did a lot of fantastic films. Uh, But this time around, we're talking about Finding Steve McQueen, his brand new film that's released on March 15th. How's everybody doing out there? It's March 13th. It's finally springtime here in the Chicagoland area. It was like 50 degrees today. Beautiful, bit windy, but I think the brutal winter is finally over, but the winter is finally here in Game of Thrones that returns next month in April. I'm really glad that winter finally ended its ugly face for the past, what, four months. I felt like I was trapped in the house like Jack Torrance in The Shining, Cabin Fever, I uh, didn't really get out to the movies that much up until recently. Last week was my birthday, March 6th. I got the AMC Stubbs A-List card, which is... I'm going to plug AMC right now because this card is fantastic. I've already been in the movies, what, two or three times in the past week. 20 bucks a month. You could see three movies a week, IMAX, 3D, regular, whatever you want to do. And you can uh, get your tickets through the app before the movie actually comes out. It's really cool. I actually booked my tickets for Us, the new Jordan Peele movie that comes out in a few weeks. I already got my tickets for it through the app. 20 bucks a month, so it's a fantastic deal if you guys like going to the movies as much as we do here at Cinefellas. First movie I checked out was Captain Marvel, just released by Marvel Studios. Starring Brie Larson, the controversial film. Uh, She's been making a lot of uh, bad publicity over this movie before it actually was released. She was talking about this is a movie not for white males pointing directly at a lot of critics and people in the industry, the movie industry in Hollywood. And a person that reviews movies, I go in looking at it as an art form. I look at it as the story, the characters, the acting, uh, the cinematography, just about the movie itself. I don't care what these actors, actresses do outside of the movies or what they do in their personal lives. I don't like drama. I don't like controversy. I just go in trying to have a good time with the movie and just analyzing everything about that film and i really did have a good time with captain marvel i went in with low expectations had a good time with it another movie i just uh, checked out with that amc card uh, fighting with my family uh written directed by Stephen merchant the wrestling story about Paige, her true story of how she came from england became this big superstar in the wwe stars uh, nick frost lena hetty a bunch of great people the rocks and he produces the film that was another surprising film that i, I really enjoyed and uh, that's up on our YouTube channel. And if you go over to cinefellows.com, we're going to see a bunch of different reviews from our writers, some of the stuff from our YouTube channel, uh, movie news, TV news, TV reviews, and movie reviews. Say that five times. I dare you. And uh, recently we just gave away a copy of The Crimes of Grindelwald, the Fantastic Beasts movie in the Harry Potter world. They returned to Hogwarts this time around, and uh, we gave that Blu-ray away this week. Each month we do giveaways, you know, movies, swag, whatever we have, we'll give it away to one lucky follower. All you got to do is subscribe to our channel or like our social media pages, and uh, you could be that lucky winner receiving a free Blu-ray disc. And like I was talking about the terrible winter, next month we have the return of Game of Thrones in HBO. The final season, six episodes, going to be six epic movies, the finale, the final of one of the greatest shows ever made 
And uh, I'm really looking forward to that. I did a trailer reaction. They just really released a trailer for season eight. Um, you see my reaction over on our YouTube channel. And just uh, really excited for the show. It's going to be really crazy how they end Game of Thrones. We've been watching seven seasons up until the final. Will the White Walkers win? Will they kill everybody? Will they figure out a way to stop the White Walkers once and for all? We shall see. So definitely check that out. It uh, returns on April 14th on HBO. Sunday nights, uh, my friends and family always do like dinner and drinks on Sunday nights for Game of Thrones. So it's going to be pretty epic. Maybe we'll do some live videos. And then next week, uh, Cinefellas, the Midwest team, uh, Henry Hill, myself, my wife, uh, my sister-in-law, Rachel, and a few other people are going to be at C2E2 Comic and Entertainment Expo in Chicago at the McCormick Place. It's uh, next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We will be there all day Saturday. I'm not sure about Sunday. We're going to be checking out the AMC panels uh, into the Badlands. They're doing uh, a premiere of season three, the first episode, and they're doing a, a panel with the director and some of the actors. And then they're also premiering the brand new show called Nasferatu, written by Joe Hill, one of my favorite writers, Lock and Key. This is Stephen King's son. He wrote this. Uh, it's going to be really exciting to see what Zachary Quintino does with this character. So we're going to be checking out a premiere of that before anybody else at C2E2 at the AMC panels. So that's next weekend. If you guys are in the Chicagoland area or in the Midwest, definitely go check that out. I think this is our fifth or sixth year in a row going, doing a lot of press, and we're going to be taking lots of videos, updating our social media page for all you guys. So if you can't make it, so definitely check us out on our pages, and we'll keep you guys updated from that convention. Getting back to the show, I talked to Mark Steven Johnson, the director I was talking about earlier. Uh, a lot of great flicks he's directed over the years. And uh, this time around, uh, it's a brand new film, Finding Steve McQueen, starring Travis Fimmel, Willem Fixter, Rachel Taylor, and the list goes on and on. A bunch of great actors in this. And uh, it's a film that takes place in 1972. The premise or synopsis is a gang of close-knit thieves from Youngstown, Ohio, attempt to steal $30 million in illegal contributions and blackmail money from President Richard Nixon's secret fund. So this is actually based on a true story. These are historical events that I was not aware of until I talked to Mark Steven Johnson, the director, about this film. And this actually did take place. I looked it up. So it was a pretty interesting premise. Honestly, it has nothing to do with Steve McQueen except uh, the main actor, Travis Fimmel, from Vikings, which is another excellent show. Travis Fimmel actually looks a lot like Steve McQueen, um, and he's obsessed with this actor in the movie. Honestly, the only film I'm familiar with with Steve McQueen is uh, Bullet, and they talk about that in the movie. Uh, one of my heroes growing up, I love Grumpy Old Men. I actually did enjoy uh, Ghost Rider, Daredevil, not so much, but it was really interesting to talk to him. He's from the Midwest. And he actually checked out Cinefellas on our website. So uh, thank you, Mr. Johnson, for taking a look into the old Cinefellas here in the Chicagoland area. So this is my conversation with the director of Finding Steve McQueen, Mark Steven Johnson. Let's do it. Mark, how are you doing? Hey, Logan, how are you doing? I'm not too bad. It's an honor to talk to you today. We're huge fans of your work. Oh, thank you. I like your site, man. It's pretty. I love the title. <laughs> yeah, you like that? <laughs> I do. Yeah, I looked it up before we chatted. And I was like, this is a really cool site. I like it. I like your sense of humor about everything, man. It's really great. Thanks. I really appreciate that. Yeah, we're actually in the process of uh, updating the site, so it's going to look even better in the near future. <laughs> you're here. Are you here in town? Is that right? Yeah, we're in, in LA. No, in Chicago. Oh, you're in Chicago. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. Wow. Yep. Been in Chicago most of our lives. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's an honor to talk to you today. Uh, how did you, first of all, how did you get involved with uh, finding Steve McQueen? Um, the producer Anthony Mastromaro sent it to me, um, and at first I was. I, I, he told me the idea, and I was like, "Look, I don't want to do a heist movie, you know. I, I, uh, 
uh, there's so many great heist films, and and what do I have to say about about robbing a bank that hasn't already been said, you know? Right. Right. And then um, and then I looked up what actually happened, and I was like, well, that can't be real. <laughs> I would have heard of this before. And I kept mm-hmm. checking and like, you know, sometimes when you read something, you start Google searching and it's like, oh, how come I don't know about this? This is the weirdest story. Um, <laughs> it's such a crazy idea that these knuckleheads from Youngstown, Ohio set out to rob the president of the United States. I was like, and, you know, so then that got me interested in the story matter. Then I got the script and it opened up with Harry sitting in that diner saying, I'm not who you think I am and telling the story um, out of sequence. And I thought, well, this is really interesting. You know, because usually, not usually, pretty much every heist movie I can think of is the tension comes from will they get away with it? You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So it's like, are they going? Are they going to pull it off? That's the drama. That's the fear of conflict. And this one, it's eight years later. They already got away with it. You know. Mm-hmm. So, so what's the conflict? The conflict is: is she going to leave him? Is she still going to love him? Are they going to be able to still run away together? Or is, you know, and of course it ends with him saying, "I've already turned myself in." You know, so. I thought that was really interesting. Um, and then, you know, it was, and I've always loved underdog stories. All my movies tend to be about underdogs in one way or another. So, an identity and people trying to be something better than they are, sometimes succeeding and sometimes failing. Um, so, you know, that's, that's what got me in. And, and I just thought it was a small budget. It was a tiny budget. Um, mm-hmm. And so you're kind of like, we can't compete with, you know, our car scenes aren't going to be Fast and the Furious. You know what I mean? Right. You know, bank robbery is not going to be heat, you know. It's, so so what can we do? Well, so, well, we can be weird, you know. Let's 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 get weird with it and have some fun with it and, uh, you know, do something that's actually a little touching and funny and, 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 and you know, and, and honor the true story but do our own thing as well, you know. Right. Yeah, I really enjoyed the final product of the movie. There's a ton of great actors and actresses in this film. Um, Thanks. You know, yeah, with making this movie, was there like any funny or memorable stories from the set? You know, like Forrest Whitaker, and Travis Fimmel, and his actors. Oh God, there's so many. I mean, Travis. The funny thing about Travis is people know him mostly from Vikings, um, yep. and Travis is such a screwball. I mean, it's <laughs> uh, he's so funny and he's so outrageous, and you know, it, it's it's uh, and that's it was fun to show that side of him. You know, um, yeah. And mostly it was pulling him back because he would look at any scene and say, "How can we make this again?" Going back to like, let's get weird with it. You know, the, the, the scene in the diner when, you know, he he's trying to avoid Molly's questions, and so he just keeps ordering desserts and eating cakes and all this kind of crap. And um, and it had nothing to do with the scene, but it just made me laugh because I get to watch him eat chocolate cake for 10 hours. <laughs> and, I'm like, that's a great idea, Travis, and you're going to be eating desserts all day today. And you can see him gradually getting more bloated and sicker, and he's just like, I don't feel good. I can't do this. I go, eat your cake. This is your idea. You <laughs> learned to put this in. <laughs> not a bad day to so, <laughs> No, it's really not. And those guys that had great chemistry, the whole gang together would make each other laugh and would – you know, it's always a great, you know, it's a, it, it, it's a great sign when people are wrapped for the day and they want to hang out, you know? Yeah. Where people are like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, I'm done. Well, I don't want to go home in my hotel room. Or what am I going to do? I want to hang out with you guys. And so it was, it very much felt like you could see the camaraderie growing between everyone. And uh, it, it was fantastic. And it still is. We're all, in, we're all on the same group text. Um, yeah. the, the group is called the, the Idiots. <laughs> the Idiots. <laughs> and the Idiots, yeah. And they'll find something, one of them will find an old picture of Travis from his modeling days and post it. Thank God, I'm feeling so hot and bothered right now. And everybody will chime in on that. <laughs> it's a way I'll find a weird commercial somebody did, and it's just continually roasting each other. It's 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 a lot of fun. Yeah, you can tell they had really good chemistry, especially in the movie. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, uh, I love Travis. He he looks a lot like Steve McQueen. I just kind of look at the pictures. I'm like, wow, that's pretty close to you know what steve mcqueen mcqueen looked like yeah yeah he really does and uh and i think he's you know again it's it's fun to show him do something uh different you know than what people expect you know yeah um so that that was really fun and it was fun working you know of course you know forrest is is a legend and and and, and so talented and so such a gentleman and uh fickner I've never been out with, I've been out with a lot of actors in public for dinners and whatnot. I don't think I've had anyone I've been with 
that gets stopped as much as Ficker. And people don't say, hey, Mr. Ficker, I just want to say hello, and I'm a big fan. They just shout, Armageddon! You know, and they're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, like they're accusing him of the Dark Knight! You know, they just yell at him. He's like, okay, thank, thank you, you know. It's That's kind of, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. People just scream out your credits at you, you know. It's just very funny. It's something about Bill that everybody knows him, and everybody, you know, has a has a different favorite movie. He's he's made so many great ones. Yeah, too many to name. Did you, uh, you know, with directing this, did you watch any films for inspiration before you went in and started shooting? Oh sure, yeah. We, I mean, all the McQueen films, of course. Um, and there's little nods in there if you watch, like, for like Bullet. Um, uh-huh. if you've watched Bullet before, you'll, you'll see, you know, that famous car chase scene, you know, mm-hmm. in San Francisco. Um, there's one that they, that I think the fans call like the, the, the magic bug, the little VW bug. Yep. Where he goes, he goes speeding down the hill and there's the bug and it turns a corner and goes and there's the bug again. <laughs> You're kind of like, okay, they're just re- reusing that same prop car over and over and over. So we did that, you know, so we'll see him. We'll, we use the bug again a couple of times, you know, for, for, you know, the fans of the movie, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, no, we, we'd, we'd watch everything, every, every McQueen movie, anything we could from that, from that genre and, and from that time period, from the poster on down, everything has that kind of retro vibe and feel to it. Um, which is fine. I mean, again, everything done on a shoestring, you know? So, yep. um, I would have loved to got the car from Bullet, exactly, but we couldn't afford it. Um, cause when, you know, you got a five million dollar movie, it's like we need two cars, one to crash and one to drive. And mm-hmm. so you have to find a cool car that, you know, it's, we're going to get the best darn car we can afford, you know? And that was <laughs> a GTO, so. <laughs> yeah, I love that. What, uh, as a director, what was different about directing this film compared to other movies you've done in the past? You know, it was the, the, uh, 100% it was the timeline. It's it's a deceptively tricky film. Um, because I didn't, you know, you don't realize until you really get into the editing room how many different timelines they've got going on. Because the movie opens up in 1980, and Harry says, I'm not who you think I am. You flash back to, we'll call it 1970, before Harry's made the gang where he's just speeding around in his car getting in trouble. And then you go from 1980 to 1970, back to 1980, and then you go back to him making the team around 71. His uncle says you're on the crew. And then you go into the bank heist where they go to Laguna Beach. And then you jump to after the bank heist where you meet Forrest Whitaker, and they're investigating the alarm and everything else. Um, So you're constantly changing timelines, which is tough to do. Um, without constantly putting slug lines on TV saying the date, you know, which is this right. Right. So, and then when you combine all those different five different timelines with the fact that they broke into the same bank three nights in a row, which is really strange. No one's ever done that before. Um, mm-hmm. again, there, there are definitely, when you're done cutting the film together, you look at it and kind of go, I mean, people can't tell what's going on as far as what time it is, what, what year it is. So, you know, you have to do a couple voiceover bits to help explain things. You have to, you know, you certainly use the color palette to, to to help you. You know, just let the audience know. You know what what year it is, and the wigs, and the music cues, and all that kind of stuff will help as well. But yeah, that was definitely you know, which which uh, on paper it's easy to do, but when you're actually seeing it, and you decide some scenes don't work, and you got to trim something, or you might want to cut a scene, but then that the whole house of cards comes down because it affects the timeline. It's, it's it was a really tricky. Yeah, and I love the music in this uh, movie, too. It really sets the tone of this era. Good. Good. That's expensive, too. You know, period's expensive. You know, that's, yeah. that's a, it's a tough thing. We, once you start getting into period clothes, period cars, period music, you know, it just gets it gets more and more expensive. And when you don't have much yeah. money, again, you just, it's funny because it's like I've made movies with a $100 million budget and this movie with a $5 million budget. But it all kind of it, it all kind of turns into independent filmmaking, you know what I mean? In the end, yes. In the end, it's always me in my backyard with high heels on, putting up cigarettes, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> getting extra insert shots. And <laughs> if you actually look at like the scene of them like putting the dynamite in, into the safe and blowing it up, those are just penny rolls with a wick on it that I'm putting into a yoga mat, you know what I mean? And slips that I yeah. mean, it's, it's just, it's so, it's so, you know, bargain basement kind of thing, but that's what you got to, you know, whatever it takes, right? <laughs> that's funny. All right. I got, yeah. uh, time, I got time for one more question here. Uh, do you have any upcoming projects in the works that we should be on the lookout for? 
I do. I've, I've got this um, little comedy called Patrick 1.5 that I'm hoping to be directing next that I rewrote. Um, and uh, I'm in the middle of casting right now, and I hope to have news on very soon. And I have a, a little movie I'm producing called Lucy Boomer with Shirley MacLaine. That's also awesome. in the casting. Uh, yeah, yeah, where she plays a character that uh, was a secretary to five U.S. presidents, and she slept with all of them. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so it's a really funny story. And it's a, it's an oddly patriotic story. Um, so, um, that's, uh, that's something that we're, we're hoping to be shooting in June. Fantastic. So you're going to be definitely be busy. Yeah, I hope so. Or everything falls apart and nothing goes. That's, that's the way <laughs> things go, you know? Nature of the movie business, right? <laughs> yep. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Mark, it was, uh, Great talking to you today. Uh, huge inspiration. Love your work. Love this movie. And really excited for everybody to see this, finding Steve McQueen. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, it was nice talking to you. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks, Logan. You too. Take care. that was my conversation with the director of finding steve mcqueen mark stephen johnson what a great humble human being uh you know i got a kick that he checked out our website checked out cinefellas he loved our site that's currently under construction and we're trying to redo that it was really great how he got attached to this film you know some stories from on set working with travis femmel you know, the good-looking guy from Vikings and how he actually really does look like Steve McQueen. And as a director, how this movie was different from other, you know, superhero movies he's done in the past, it comedies. Uh, but the way he went about this and the constraints that really affect the overall project with the timeline, with the film starting in 1972 and ending in 1980, and kind of going back and forth in this timeline from 1972 to 1980, from the before and after of this heist, see what happens to Travis Fimmel's character, Harry Barber, uh, the person that really <laughs> loves Steve McQueen. This is kind of like a Bonnie and Clyde scenario and situation in the story. It's more or less a romance story between... Harry Barber's character and his girlfriend and the aftermath of this heist. And Harry's on the run from the FBI and they're on the lookout for him and seeing what happens to him and how it affects his relationship with his girlfriend in this movie. I love Mark Steven Johnson. What a great human being. Great conversation. Very down to earth. It's great to see a Midwesterner make it in the Hollywood scene and making a lot of great films and movies that I grew up on enjoying this new crime romance finding Steve McQueen of Harry Barber's character idolizing the late great Steve McQueen uh, the film Bullet that I'm a huge fan of and just the story of this heist that took place back in the 70s with this gang of close-knit thieves and what happens to Harry Barber's character and his girlfriend at the end hopefully you guys enjoy this interview and conversation I had with Mark Steven Johnson Finding Steve McQueen will be released on March 15th via Momentum Pictures. Thank you guys again for listening to the Cinefellas podcast. This is Logan Myers, episode 28. We'll be back shortly with another podcast. And I'm hoping to get uh, old Uncle Henry Hill back on here talking about movies and TV shows. Uh, doing some reviews and, you know, recent news in the entertainment industry. So this is Logan Myers signing out from Cinefellas Studios. Until the next podcast. Cheers!